the five straight Pro Bowls. Fantastic, self-explanatory. Uh, I also think about seven seasons with five or more sacks. Very few interior defensive linemen in the National Football League can say they put up consistent numbers in that way. But here's my favorite. Uh, in nine seasons with the Tennessee Titans, Jarrell Casey missed five games. For a guy that played as hard as he did, that was double teamed as much as he was, that was the focal point of the opposition week in, week out for nine years to miss five games, that's remarkable production showing up every single week. So to take it a little bit further and talk about his football, I'd like to call up our Executive Vice President and General Manager, John Robinson, to kind of open the comments. Thank you. Hey, it's such a cool day uh, to, to be here for, for Jarrell and, and celebrate his career. You know, I was driving in and I was thinking about it in, in 2010 uh, when I was out in L.A. And the, Jarrell, they put us in, I think, Coach Holt's film room. And it was about 50 degrees in there. It was freezing. And, and we're watching on offense, you know, the big ticket item was Tyron Smith. And, and you couldn't really, you couldn't draw up a better looking left tackle. Um, and then on defense, it was, it was Jarrell. And, and, and Jarrell didn't have a real imposing physical looking stature. But you watch the film, and he just kept showing up and showing up and showing up and making play after play. And you go out to practice, and because sometimes the tape can kind of throw you for a loop on how a guy really looks. And sure enough, I go down to the offense in the O-line, and there goes Tyron. He looks like some kind of Greek god running down through there. And I go watch Jarrell, and it, it's kind of that little short, squatty guy that makes all the plays. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was cool to see him uh, – to come here, he certainly got off to a fast start uh, here with the Titans. Um, I will never forget the, it was the second or third day um, uh, on the job uh, here for me. And I was getting gas at the gas station right around the corner from St. Thomas. And, and there was a, I think it was an Escalade. He had an Escalade and I, he was pumping gas. And I was like, that's Casey pumping gas. And I, uh, I didn't say anything. I didn't go over to him. I kind of filled up my truck. I was going to go on into the office. Gets in his truck. He pulls around, puts on the brakes. He backs up, and he gets out. And he walks over to me, and he says, are you the new GM? And I said, yes, I am. And he goes, I'm Jarrell Casey. I said, I know who you are. I'm a fan. I was like, we're going to win a lot of football games together, man. I, I appreciate what you stand for. And as I got to work with him, his passion for the game, um, his dedication to his teammates, uh, his leadership skill, uh, and certainly his dominance on the field. Uh, you could see it week in and week out. Morg and, and KB are here, and, and we talk about players that you've got to stop week in and week out for the opposing team. And you can rest assured that 99 was one of those guys for the opposing team. His picture was up there as a guy we've got to stop. Um, for as much as he did on the field uh, for the football team, he did even more in the community. Uh, just an outstanding uh, role model, um, a giver, a giver of his time, a giver of his, of his money, a giver, giver of his efforts uh, to the people of Nashville. And we are blessed to have him here and blessed to immortalize, I guess you could say, Mike Keith as a Titan for life. So congratulations, Jarrell, on an outstanding career. John said it in talking about what Jarrell did off the field. If he was a five-time pro bowler on the field, he was a pro bowler every year in terms of how he led the community and set the tempo on the field, but set the tempo in our locker room for guys to see what it was like to be involved in the community and to make a difference. Our two-time Walter Payton Man of the Year and a guy that stepped in in different places when he was needed so many different times. And by the end of his career, he was totally setting the tone for what we did off the field. I'd like to ask Betty Kirkland if she would come forward now to say a few words. Betty is the CEO of Project Return, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about Jarrell's impact uh, for their particular endeavor. Please welcome Betty Kirkland.
I'm going to talk about a different side of Jarrell, although I really love that stat about only five games in nine years. That's, that's incredible. A substantial portion of our community is or has been under correctional control, and on the way to and from that, they've experienced the violence of poverty and the pain of victimhood. Jarrell Casey understands that. At Project Return, we work every day to help people start over after prison. Connecting Jarrell to those individuals and bringing his voice to that part of our community has been such a gift. His authentic interactions with people who have been disregarded and even discarded are a gift to them as well as to the community at large. His spirit of hope and positivity is a substantive boost to their future and to the well-being of our city. We love having the support of Jarrell and Ryan Casey, the Casey Fund, which has been meaningful for Project Return on three levels. First, their generous gifts have gone straight to the signature services that we provide to the people who are doing everything they can to live good lives and leave prison behind. It is life-changing, and we thank you, Jarrell, and thank you, Ryan. Second, their passionate belief in our cause and their clear voice of support has strengthened our impact in the community. Not everyone comes our way and sits with our people. Third, at a personal level, I am, we are grateful for their friendship. As tough and hard driving as he is on the field, his compassion and empathy is just as strong, just as notable, I can tell you that. With humility, he walks and carries himself with the knowledge that there but for the grace of God go me or him or you. The other thing to know about Jarrell Casey is that this is a twofer. It is Jarrell and Ryan together all the way. It's a team, equal partners with a shared devotion. And yes, they are compassionate, but beyond that, what also drives them is the fierce desire for true justice for people. Thank you, Jarrell and Ryan, for bringing that to ground at Project Return. Ryan and Jarrell, we are grateful, we are proud, we are happy to see Nolan and Peyton, and we are excited for all of you. And we're glad to be part of your city and your team. Thank you. Before I bring Jarrell up to, to make some comments, I want to throw out an angle that you might not know that those who played with him and those who had the great opportunity to work with him on a daily basis certainly understand. The term Jarrell, would you? was used a lot over nine years, and that is, Jarrell, would you sign a football for an auction or for a young person who's sick? Jarrell, would you say hello to a group of sponsors or to a high school football team who's come by practice? Jarrell, would you drop a line for the Jumbotron? Jarrell, would you have time for a quick interview? The fact that we would say, almost on a daily basis, Jarrell, would you? And every single time, he said yes. Every single time, as a work colleague, he was there for us. Certainly, he was there on Sundays. Certainly, we saw him in the community. But I'm telling you, behind the scenes, Jarrell Casey was a Titans great. In every way, he was a Titans great. So please join me in welcoming somebody so special to all of us on what is a great day for the Tennessee Titans, my friend, Jarrell Casey. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all being here today. Um, definitely a pleasure and an honor to be in front of this podium one more time in front of the Titan Nation. Um, just want to say thank you to the organization, first and foremost. Uh, just also want to say thank you to the Lord. Um, without his blessing, without, without his, his uh, hard work of shaping me, creating me, um, I wouldn't be here. And the things that he installed in me, uh, get that from my mother. She, she taught me to go out there and give everything I can. Her, her favorite uh, saying and my uncle's favorite saying was always go out there and put that in the dirt. Um, if you don't know what that blank is, uh, it's a little provocative. But uh, um, that was the thing. And I always drove that with me as I was going through my career. That was always something I always lived on was go out there and bust. Bust your tail. Go get after it. And uh, I try to make sure I display that as much as I can. And, and to this last day when I made this last decision in my career, um, it was a hard decision to come and want to retire, but um, 
after sitting down talking with my family and going through the last three years of injuries and dealing with different things mentally and things like that, it just was the best decision for me and my family to pull away from the game and take our focus somewhere else. Um, me and my wife always talked about not letting the game become you, you, be, you making the game become your, your world. And uh, I found myself kind of getting wrapped up in the game a little too much, um, not really focused on what's outside to come. And uh, now going forward, I think, you know, that's the best move for me and my family, uh, trying to focus on life outside of football. I've done everything I possibly could inside this game, look to be a Hall of Famer, look to go bust my tail every week, look to go get a Super Bowl ring. Um, it didn't happen. Um, Lord's, you know, if Lord's willing to be a Hall of Famer, that'd definitely be a blessing to come. But... You know, for me, the game of football, pursuing to go get a Super Bowl, has come to an end. And, uh, you know, the body itself told me what, what, what it's going to be. And I couldn't go out there and keep damaging, damaging myself and not be there for my family for the long haul. So uh, I made a decision to go ahead and call it a quits. I called John up um, a couple weeks ago. Um, I want to say about three weeks ago when I sat down and I talked to him, uh, you know, hashed out the, the differences that we had or uh, whatever. It wasn't really much differences, more so my feelings. And, how I felt about the whole situation, but they kept open arms. You know, they they they, they said, you know, Cage, don't worry about none of that. You're a Titan for life, your family, and you know, we love you over here. And I definitely thank y'all for that. It's definitely a blessing. Um, Cause me and my wife, we said and talk about that a lot. Like, damn, what what the hell did I do? What what's, what the heck going on? But you know, um, it's a blessing. And Lori, he he works things in in magical ways. And when I called John, and he he opened up with straight joy. It wasn't no, like what, what you doing calling me. It was straight joy, and you know. Um, to have your GM um, answer the phone and be hyped for you to come back is definitely exciting. But um, I think the thing that brought me most um, joy in this game was my boys that's here right now, you know, um, brother, the brotherhood of the game. You know, you don't find that a lot, a lot outside this world. You don't find that outside the building a lot. And that's one thing I talk about. I was talking to Jim the other day, and we, I was telling him the biggest thing about Tennessee Titans was talk to other players everywhere else, and you don't hear them talk about a family. You don't hear them talking about a brotherhood. And from day one, KB can be attested to this. When he came in, well, day one, Derek, when I first got in, he called me before, as soon as I got drafted, hey, Case, when you get in, here go my number, hit me up, man, I'll take, I'll take great care of you. And Derek, I like to say, man, that right there had pushed me to go do the same. And that's why I stepped in the building the way I did, was because of you. You, you. Everything I did, taking care of my body, like he talked about, bad shape, the reason I switched over to being vegan, the reason I did everything I did in the offseason was you, my dog. You, you was that guy who was a great example, role model, role model, and I wanted to be the same for KB and the rest of the guys that came in. And by Derek putting those stepping stones out there, allowed me to go do that. And KB, I just want to say, man, you've been a great leader so far. Keep leading these boys. Um, let's make sure we get a Super Bowl here now. And I just want to say thank you all again, media, for always being love, showing love, always being here for me, always, you know, writing something nice, never, never having really nothing, nothing negative to say about me. And, so thank you, Lord, that you blessed me not to have that come up. But, uh, but appreciate y'all. And I just want to say thank y'all again for coming out today, showing me the love, and, you know, welcoming me back home to being a Titan. Appreciate it. Y'all know how I get with those sweats in front of this camera. Terrell, you always talked about wanting to spend your whole career with one team. How, how do you view the last year then? Do you, do you just sort of write the year in Denver off? or, or would... okay, right. The office there, you know, and uh, something I talked about um, a lot um, with my wife and with, with my agent is the I didn't want to go up to Denver. I can, I can honestly admit that I did not want to go up there. When John called me and told me that he was going to trade me, I honestly begged him. I was like, don't do it. I don't want to go nowhere else. I want to be a Titan forever. That's just what I wanted to do. And, when, you know, you don't control that, that situation or whatnot. But at the end of the day, man, uh, I did what I said I wanted to do, and I wanted to play for the Titans. And that was a goal of mine. And, you know, three games there, do I scratch it? Not really. But it, to me, like you said, I didn't really go get, get to go out there and showcase my talents the way I wanted to, show them what I can do. But it's definitely a blessing to be back here. You had some bad feelings uh, about the trade. Obviously, you talked about patching it up with, with John. What was that year like, kind of coming to terms with all of that and ending up full circle back here after you said the things that you did? The crazy thing about it is uh, after I made the statement or whatnot, it literally was like two, three days. Me and my wife, we sat there, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm – I'm upset, I'm, I'm mad or whatever, but I always talked to her before the thing even went down. I know it's a business. Crazy part, I, as soon as the season was over, I called it out. I told her, I said, bro, I'm out of here this year. I already know how it goes. This is part of the business. It's a you know, new guy coming to town who, who's dominant. Um, injuries creep into the game. I knew how, how that all goes and um, kind of called it out. And, you know, it was a blessing that after talking to John, you know, 
And we, we, we talked about it, he made clear to me, you know, at the end of the day, you could be on the streets these days, you know, you could be sitting around waiting for a job. But he gave me the opportunity to go get traded somewhere else to continue to play and showcase my talents, and I only can be thankful and grateful for that. Terrell, you're from, you know, Long Beach, Southern California, went to USC. Just prior to coming to Tennessee, what were your thoughts about, you know, just coming to, to Nashville, and then once you got here, how did your, you know, view of uh, Nashville, Tennessee kind of evolve as you uh, made this your home? Shoot, first off, I didn't even know nothing about Nashville or Tennessee when I first got drafted. I'm like, shoot, where, where, what part of this country I'm even going? So I had to literally go Google it up and, and search, and when I, when I looked at it, I was like, okay, we're going to rock with some country music. We're going we're gonna to get, get it going. But as soon as I got up here, man, it was, it was just like love. Everybody that you run across is super nice. Everybody that you run across are just cool peoples. And so that, that kind of, like, was a little different for me being back home in L.A. Every, everybody in L.A., you usually stuck up. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't nobody. Nobody care who you are. So to get out here and just, you know, have a full community, you know, based around you, everybody loving on you and stuff like that, definitely was a blast. And, you know, to come out, yeah, Tennessee at that time wasn't the hottest in the NFL or not, but to be able to build a culture with the brothers here and build a winning tradition around here is what it was all about, you know. That's the reason I stuck around as long as I stuck around with going through the whole free, free agency um, periods and having options to go. But my thing was there's no, no reason to run from this great community when you're trying to build something great. And that was my whole mindset being here. Darrell, you have spent time here when it was low and you were a big part of when things got high. What were some of the highlight moments you know, that year when you guys were able to go to that AFC championship? Um, from that year, it was more so to just the commodity we started to build. I think, you know, a lot of guys start hanging out together a lot more. Like before, it used to be just DB, um, DBs by themselves hanging out. The linebackers, the D-lines probably hanging in them. But that year, man, everybody started to click. Everybody started to get together. And like I talk about that familyhood, that brotherhood. Um, we started to do like trips um, on, a yearly, on a yearly basis at the end of the season. And we have dudes from all different groups coming and joining us on these trips. And when you can build those type of camaraderie and you, you're doing certain things inside the office, it shows up outside the building and it shows up on the football field. And I think that's something that, that we've pushed around here a lot is the work that a lot of guys doing down in the community, a lot of the work that we're doing on the field, going out there extra. That was all set in stone um, early years and these guys is running with it. Did you start the off season? thinking you were going to play and sort of change your mind along the way, or were you trying to convince yourself to still play through much of the offseason? I was more so convincing myself trying to, trying to still go. Um, once the season had ended up there in Denver, um, honestly, I was checked out. Like, like I said, uh, mentally, just not really there. Um, get up, go work out. Some days don't go work out. Uh, once I started doing that, I knew that my love for the game was kind of starting to dwindle. Um, it was never a day. My, my, my wife used to tell me, Brent, stay in bed, take a nap. Like, just re relax a little bit. I'm up at 6 o'clock in the morning. When I'm sitting, I'm sitting there in the bed at 7 o'clock, I knew something was going wrong. And uh, so I used to get up, and I tried to tell the wife, like, a couple weeks ago, I'm like, all right, let's get, a, let's get back at it. Let's go. Let's go. And the body's just not driving the same. I go out there trying to do certain things, trying to move around, trying to run, trying to just go have free time. The body's not clicking the same, and it's not moving the same way. And there's no way I'll go out there and put bad film on, on tape just to go collect a couple of dollars. It's just not my style. My thing, if I can't give you everything I can give, y'all watch my game. I'm out there nonstop from play one to play, play, zero, um, play 100, 300, whatever it is, whatever we're out there for, I'm, I'm trying to get it. And so if I can't do that, then I'm, I don't need to be out there. Whether it be the, the finger wag after a sack or a little celebration, I mean, you brought the energy. What's your message to the fans that I know just absolutely loved you and still do? Um, big stance to the fans is just thank you for your pre uh, thank you for being there, appreciating my game. You know, a lot of people out there are haters. They don't understand how I play. They don't understand the things that I do on that field. But those guys who who actually tune in week to week and really see the stuff that I that I do and I put out on that film, I just want to say thank y'all for really you know cherishing it, uh, giving me the Pro Bowls that I got. Because without them, you know, and without the media and all the people voting for me, I wouldn't have been there. I wouldn't be Drill Casey, five-time Pro Bowler, um, ten years in this league. So. You know, say thank you to all y'all for just really rooting and been, been in the stands every week. And, you know, when those sacks do come out, they scream and going nuts. And, you know, me putting people in body bags, that's just always a joy. So, definitely. All the work that you did, you and your family did in the community, was there a specific instance or, or circumstance that, like, you experienced that you and you guys realized, okay, we have to give back. This is something that we need to do. This is important to us. Um, well, the biggest thing that not won't say necessarily something happened and where we had to do this. Um, it was always just a, a passion of, of both of ours 
One, um, when my brother been incarcerated, it was always something that, you know, I wanted to make a difference of trying to keep people from going back and getting into the system and things like that. And then for my wife, the, the career that she worked and the, the career that she has, um, being an attorney, it was just always something in our mind that we wanted to help as much as possible. And like I said, it was always installed in me from day one. I used to tell all my friends from back home, if I made it to lead, that, that was going to just be the scratch of the surface. My thing is to see how much I can affect the people around me. And as long as I can make change in other people's lives, whatever I do on the football field is, is icing on the cake. And so, you know, my first couple of years, I used to always just go out there in the community and tag along with people that's doing the community work. And I'm like, dang, this is, this is fun. Like, why not go and do it yourself? You know what I'm saying? Like, why not go and get involved fully yourself? And my wife, she got here, and she was like, stop wishing. Let's get it done. And that's how we got out there and started getting it rocking. You know, you played football your whole life. And what, what, what are your emotions? What's the overriding emotion? You're probably happy, you know, some sadness, maybe proudness of what you accomplished? I'm proud. Nowhere near sad. It's not one bit of sadness in me at all. I made the decision on my own. That was the blessing of it all. I could have been hurt, and no team ever wanted me. But I was able to sit around and, you know, be able to take in a couple of offers and see what people was offering. And I was able to sit there with my wife and say, hey, we're not doing it. We're going to go and rock out and go do something else. And to be able to make that decision on my own accord was definitely a blessing and definitely a feeling that I always wanted to have, make sure, you know, I was walking away from this game on my own accord. Jarrell, one of the favorite stories you told us when you got your first big contract, you bought your mama house. You said, I don't need anything else. Now it's your time, you have a beautiful family. What's next for you, and is the Casey Fund the vehicle for all of that? Casey Fund is, all, is, for, is driving the vehicle all the way. You know, uh, my wife, she got her things going on. My first, my first thing before I do anything, I tell my wife, I make a promise to myself, I won't go and try to dive into any business endeavors until I finish up school. So that's my number one goal. I left as a junior leaving college, and um, in order for me to go bless myself, I got to finish up college. So I'm basically putting myself on a little punishment until, you know, until I finish up school. No, no telling how long that would take. I'm not a school person, but, you know, I got a strong backbone who's going to sit there and ride with me. So she going to make sure it get done. She want to take pictures with me in our cap and gowns. So I know she's going to make it happen. But, you know, biggest thing is I'm blessed. I'm fortunate enough to play this game. And this organization have taken great care of me and my family that we don't have to rush to go figure out something else right now. But folks on, like I was saying, more so the mental space and really gather myself for the next year or two. And then, you know, from there, is, I'm only 31, so I got a lot of, lot of life ahead of me. And uh, from, from the things that we have in place and the goals that we have in mind, y'all not done hearing from us, not yet. You referred to, to Jeffrey Simmons. Did you see him much last year while you were on the injured list? And what, what do you expect for him um, with this organization? No, I didn't, really get to see, I didn't get to see him. I didn't run into him in person or anything like that. I talked to him a couple times. Um, but he's going to be a hell of a player. He's, he's one guy who, when I first came in, he, he got underneath the wing. He came out working. He came out ready to push. And to have a guy like that, like I said, once, I, once they drafted him, I seen how he was working. I, like I said, it's part of the business. You know what's to expect to come. So um, it was never, ever a hard feeling with, the, with, with Jeffrey. Um, like I said, I love the guy dearly. Um, it's, part, it's just time to go shine, man. It's just time to get the job done. Um, I left some big shoes, shoes out there for him to fill. So hope you go out there and handle it. Uh, definitely from his first, what, two years now? He's definitely been doing it. So um, definitely excited to see where he comes. Now I'm a football fan, so I get to go and actually watch the games. So I get to really pay attention and dive in. And hopefully, you know, in the next year or so, that he feel like I can help him out a little bit and we get out there and work together. And my body ain't breaking down no more. I can go out there and really teach him something. You played so, so many games, had, had so many moments. I mean, what, what are some moments and memories that maybe stood out to you as the best? Uh, one, my best is always going to be my first sack. My first career sack against Big Ben. I will never forget that sack. Um, I feel like I hit that dude so hard, I feel like I almost broke my chest. Uh, but that, that's definitely one big moment. Uh, I, would, I probably could never forget the Jets, the Jets game when we got the big old rumble. Because I would never thought out of my life I would get in a rumble in the NFL. I thought I'd keep myself calm and collected. But that was a pretty big moment. Uh, but the biggest moment is just getting to the AFC Championship. Um, fighting this many years. and. Trying to, trying to basically win a Super Bowl. I think that was one of my biggest moments. Even though we lost, to be able to be in that big of a, a stage at this level, um, feeling what that environment is, is about. And like I said all the time, playing with the brothers next to you, knowing that they out there fighting and digging and clawing and to come out that game the way we did is definitely a blessing. You guys going to be Nashvilleians, Case? Um, at the moment, not at the moment, not at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to get her back here. I'm trying to get her back here. But right now we, I'm in the process of uh, – 
Um, staying in Denver, that's what we're going to be at for the moment until we figure out what life is going to bring for us. But once we figure that out, we've got about at least two or three years in Denver, and then from there we'll figure out what life's going to bring. Last one? Anything else? Thanks, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you very much.